Election Day, voters came out in full force and threw the ruling Republicans out of the House. Americans were clearly motivated by the war in Iraq. Now, George Walker Bush, you solemnly swear. After electing George W. Bush twice, ladies and gentlemen, in November 2006, American voters sent him an angry message. What's changed today is the election's over and the Democrats won. The president's approval rating had gone from a post-9-11 high of 90% all the way down to 31%. So what happened? Two words, Iraq and Katrina. That's not the first day about it. We wish we could land on every one of these rooftops and pick these people up. It goes back to 2003 when Bush, having declared victory, decided to delegate the Iraq occupation essentially outsourcing war policy to Donald Rumsfeld and Vice President Cheney. If you look at it, um, he subcontracted and outsourced a lot. In May 2003, he asked Ambassador Paul Bremer to head up the transition from American occupation to Iraqi rule. Bremer would report to Rumsfeld. Our job is to turn and help the Iraqi people regain control of their own destiny. Bremer made two decisions that many critics argue set the stage for the Iraqi insurgency. He disbanded the Iraqi army and removed Saddam's Ba'ath Party members from the new government. Both complete reversals of Bush's earlier policy. When I asked President Bush about these these, uh, rather consequential decisions on Ambassador Bremer's part, he said to me, you know, I don't really remember. You should talk to Hadley, his national security advisor. I thought that um, this was very telling in terms of how detached he was. As Iraq descended into a bloody quagmire, Donald Rumsfeld's master plan for a fairly light force of troops was exposed as dangerously flawed. Those troops faced growing insurgency and a potential civil war, while the administration denied its existence. I guess the reason I don't use the phrase guerrilla war is because there, there isn't one. At the same time, Iraq was becoming a nest for outside terrorists. They were wrong that doing what they did in Iraq would affect uh, counterterrorism. And in fact, it, it just served to do the opposite. It drew new recruits into Iraq. <laughs> As the war raged on, we learned the administration was wrong about something else. Saddam had not possessed weapons of mass destruction, certainly not nuclear weapons. Arab intelligence was wrong, Israeli intelligence was wrong, German intelligence was wrong. This was the tragedy. We went to war for a reason that turned out to be wrong. After all the rhetoric, it turned out there never really was a mushroom cloud, just a smokescreen. The news kept getting worse. These shocking photos from Abu Ghraib prison in Baghdad exposed widespread mistreatment of Iraqi prisoners by American soldiers, giving America a huge black eye internationally. This government does not torture people. We began to see a growing credibility chasm that owes itself to uh, the president telling us that we're on uh, a certain path that the facts on the ground suggest otherwise. And that credibility chasm was about to get deeper in August 2005 when a new storm appeared on the horizon back at home. This will go down as the eve of what could be the fourth or fifth worst storm ever to strike the United States. Katrina left an indelible stain on this presidency. Hurricane Katrina exposed a dysfunctional federal bureaucracy and a president who appeared to be out of touch. When you're operating on instinct, on gut, from inside a bubble, the bubble of the Oval Office, the world kind of goes to hell. You can't run the world that way. It's too big and too complicated. Uh, Again, I want to thank you all for... And Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. Everywhere we look, victims waving at us. As people stood in desperation on those rooftops and in the Superdome... Get us out of here! We want to get out of here! The president had a photo taken from Air Force One. The decider was now the observer. If instead of a flyover, he had flown in and walked with me in the streets, it may have spurred the action that never, never really occurred. I think what Katrina did more than anything was take suspicions that the American public had after the execution of post-war Iraq. It took those concerns 
and it basically confirmed them. And in November 2006, Americans responded at the voting booth. Here on Capitol Hill, this truly was a new day. The Democrats have been awarded control of the House of Representatives. Giving Democrats a majority in both houses of Congress a clear rebuke to the president. If you look at race by race, it was close. The cumulative effect, however, was not too close. It was a thumping. That thumping led him to make a decision he had resisted just months earlier. And I know the speculation, but I'm the decider, and I decide what is best. And what's best is for Don Rumsfeld to remain as the Secretary of Defense. Now, after a series of thoughtful conversations, Secretary Rumsfeld and I agreed that the timing is right for new leadership at the Pentagon. Although Bush called it a resignation, he had fired Donald Rumsfeld. Vice President Cheney, a close friend and colleague of Rumsfeld, wasn't happy. He didn't consult Dick Cheney. He called him in a day or two before it happened, and President Bush said, I'm replacing Rumsfeld. Cheney said, and I think this is significant, he said, uh, well, I disagree, Mr. President, but it's obviously your call. It marked a waning of Cheney's influence. With Rumsfeld gone and Robert Gates at the Defense Department, the president decided to implement a new war strategy. I've committed more than 20,000 additional American troops to Iraq. The vast majority of them, five brigades, will be deployed to Baghdad. It became known as the surge, and Bush had the man to make it happen, General David Petraeus. This is a fine-looking bunch of soldiers right here. General Petraeus will be one of the heroes of this era because he has adapted the strategy to the situation and with some luck on the ground, things that were happening there within the Iraqi population, he's taking advantage of that. The question I think that everybody is asking is, how long will this take? And at what point do we say enough? Senator Barack Obama and other Democrats opposed the surge, as did some Republicans. But over the course of 2007 and 2008, the strategy took shape and largely succeeded in drawing down the violence. I think that that decision, which was controversial even within the administration, is going to be remembered as one of the president's uh, contributions after, after he's gone. Iraq is much better, more stable, less violent. But the war isn't over. They worry about the next surprise because that's what Iraq has done, continually dealt surprises. In the waning days of the Bush administration, the numbers speak for themselves. More than 4,000 U.S. troops killed, 30,000 wounded, tens of thousands of Iraqis dead. Do you believe the war in Iraq is a war of choice or a war of necessity? Uh, I think it's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, please uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit. A war of choice or a war of necessity? I mean, it's a war of necessity. We, 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 my judgment, we had no choice when we look at the intelligence I looked at that says the man was a threat. It was a war of choice. It was not a war of necessity. The world was against it. That region was a powder keg. I'm glad that Saddam Hussein's finger has been removed from the powder keg. So I don't believe it was a mistake, but the majority of the American people do.